guys, Stacy Burke here. My roommates aren't home, so I thought I would use the bathroom setting. Because <laughs> I love the shower curtain, and it does give me the best lighting and acoustics for my webcam. Um, I haven't really sat down and talked with you guys for a while, you know. It's like, I went to FetishCon. I tried to show you a little bit of FetishCon. Um when I went to Florida with my Snapchats and in my hotel room and stuff like that, I shot a lot. And then when I came back home, I just, I got busy. I did, you know, I, I worked at the dungeon with Tanya Danielle. Like I gave you some Snapchats of there. And then it was just like summertime. This is really busy. Everyone has something going on. We're going here. We're going there working. And then, um, Dealing with lawyer stuff. Yes, I'm still going through the divorce. It's I guess it's going to take a while. Divorces take a while, I guess. Especially when the other party keeps fighting you. So, more lawyer fees if you don't... I don't want to get too into it because I don't really know what's going on. It's just... It's going to be a long process, I guess. And I'm paying more and more uh, lawyer fees and all that kind of stuff. Um... It's getting kind of expensive, extremely expensive. Uh, so I'm a little worried on that, but what are you going to do? You know, I'm just looking around like, oh, I need to clean that. I need to clean that. Uh, hold on. Sorry, I had to clean something. So there's really not much to really tell you uh, about it because it's just more of the same, I guess. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of... Learning, if you saw my video video before this, like I'm kind of like letting go of the anger and stuff, and I'm trying to be just live in the moment and be happy and know everything's fine right now. Not to say that I don't have my moments. Like yesterday, I was kind of in a bad mood. I tried to film. Uh, we had like a little Naples fest, like a little like a little festival here, and. Um, I don't know. For some reason, I was just in not the best mood possible. Uh, and it's when I'm like that, it's best that I'm not around people because you don't know what will set me off. I'm like with everybody, everyone gets that way. But um, I just know to, um, there goes my phone. And I'm sorry if I don't know how to start this video because there's things that I wanted to sit down and do a video, but I waited because there's things that upset me and I want to do a rant video, but then I didn't and I stepped away from it. And um, uh, I probably should have done it, but then again, I guess not because I don't want to come off like um, that, um, that person. Oh, it gives me... I got, people have been saying, oh, you got like eye boogers, like you got, you know how you get like stuff in the, in the, in the corners of the eye? No, I looked, I have eyelashes growing in the corners and it hurts too much to tweeze them. So I've been getting scissors, like those little tiny, um, like nail scissors and, and cutting them. I don't know. Why am I having eyelashes grow in the corners of my eye? not doing anything. I mean, I, I don't wear any makeup, so it's not like any eyelash stuff I've been putting on. So I don't, I don't know. Anyway, it's weird. I've never heard such, such a thing. Have, have you know anyone that has eyelashes grow in the middle, like in the corners of the eyes? Like it hurts to tweeze. I can't, I tried. It hurts too bad. The only thing I could do is just cut them. So anyway, Sorry this video is like going nowhere. Like I've been wanting to bring you up to date on stuff and I, and I do want to tell you about some rants and stuff because, okay, if you know, I have FetishCon. I go to FetishCon. Uh, it's a domain I, I, I've had for a long time and it's, it's, a, it's just a fetish convention and I love it. And of course, every year it gets bigger and bigger like most things, but there's some people that I guess they don't like it. They got big or they have their own reasons why they might not like it, which is fine. They're fetish producers and stuff like that. Well, there's this one, like a couple, every time I, I, I upload a video about FetishCon, they haven't came for a while because I guess this producer, when he showed up, he had a girlfriend and then his girlfriend took off with one of the other fetish producers. I don't know, drama, drama, whatever. And so he had a bad taste in his mouth and he stopped going to FetishCon. Fine, you know, 
whatever you want to do, you want to do. But every time I upload a video about FetishCon, he would make a comment on Twitter like, oh, you just saved me tons of money. I didn't have to go to FetishCon. I got to see it on, on your YouTube channel. Yay. And he would make a comment every year about that. Ha uh ha. -huh. Mm -hmm. Ignore it. You know what I mean? Because he might mean it as a joke, but it's kind of insulting to me since FetishCon, the name FetishCon and the idea of fetish convention was kind of like my baby. That's why I bought the domain in the first place because I always wanted a convention like that. You know, and for you to poo-poo it, especially to me or anyone that's involved with FetishCon is, is hurtful. It's hurtful and it's shady and it's not something a friend would do. You know, if it's a joke, it's not a very funny joke. So I've ignored it for years. He would always make that comment. Well, finally this year, I have it. He made the same comment, basically, oh, you just saved me tons of cash. Thank you. Thank you for posting a FetishCon video. And by the way, I don't know anyone there. So I'm glad I didn't go or something like that. And so I post it back. I go, the reason you don't know anyone is because you never show up. And it's rude and hurtful for you to say stuff like that to something that's very beloved to me and beloved to a lot of people. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was just a joke. Anyway, he got upset that I got upset because I basically had it. I go, this is rude. This is straight up rude. You know, and then he started barking at me. And so I just blocked him. I go, go to the drama boys. Go to, because, you know, my, the drama boys that don't, that didn't go to FetishCon this year. There's some drama boys. There's a few people that used to always go, but now they're not going anymore. I don't know if it's because they really do not want to go to FetishCon. They want to save money. They don't like it. Or it could be because of me. Whatever the reason is the reason. Whatever. I had a great time without them around, so I'm fine with it. I'd rather go there for positive, good people. But anyway, of course, as soon as I blocked him, he went straight to the drama boys, and then they started ranting and raving about me. Which is fine. One guy even called me histonic, histonic. I'll put the screen caps there. And if you look it up, it's basically a woman, generally, who wants to be the center of attention and basically has tantrums. Well, that could fit almost anybody. That could even fit him. Because the guy that wrote this had a girlfriend. I think it was a wife. I'm not sure. And when they broke up, I got so many texts about ranting about her. And then he's friends with the drama boys who always get angry at each other and do these rants and want to be center for attention. And they get mad at each other. But then they're friends the next day. Which is weird because they don't give me the same courtesy. Like if I have a rant or whatever, they're not friends with me the next day. They just call me histonic. Histonic. I think I'm saying the right word. And, you know, they, they mock me. And I was like, and then they're saying, oh, well, you know, she's a liar. She's this. And, and I really pride myself on honesty. I really do. There was a time in my life where I tried to lie because people lied to me and that's my pet peeve is lying, dishonesty, especially the people that I love. So I thought I would try to lie to show them how it felt. First of all, I learned I'm not a good liar. And second of all, they don't care. <laughs> so, and plus, once you start lying, it just discredits you. So you might as well tell the truth. And I think that's another reason why they don't like me because I will. I will. Whatever I say is the truth. And they just don't like it. So I'll insert the screenshots. If you saw a Twitter rant like a couple weeks ago and you didn't know what that's about, this is kind of, I'm kind of rehashing it and I'm just kind of explaining it. And uh, I'm doing it in a more common, calmer uh, tone. But also I realize like people are going to think whatever they think about me. And it's kind of sad because a lot of these people I've known for 20 odd years and they're believing, of course, my husband who they met through me and they know less. And I know the truth. I know the truth. And if they want to believe whatever they want to believe, go ahead. Because especially when they, one person at the LA County Fair witnessed my husband having a tirade on me and was trying to, you know, like, like 
uh, sympathize with me and stuff like that. So he knows better. You know, he knows better. Right. Every time I try to film, there's like noises. But anyway, I can't stop them, whatever they want to believe. Or, and I can't really like, or even if they don't believe it, I don't care. But there was this um, video I saw of the BET Awards, um, Maxine Waters, and she uh, accepted an award. And I'm going to insert a little bit of it in this video. And she was based, well, she was kind of doing it politically, but I'm, I took it as what's going on with me. Sometimes people will say things to hush you up, to put you down, say you're histonic, or uh, my husband would say you have Munchhaus, no, what would she call me? Is it Munchhausen disease or, or, anyway, any kind of disorder they would put there, God, now I can't think of it. I knew this was going to happen. When I press record, I can't think of it. Not Munchhausen disease, but there's something else, uh, some kind of disorder, or it's like um, a socially inept disorder. They will basically do whatever they can to suppress you, to oppress, yeah, oppress you, like to just to shut you up, to make you feel you you have no value, no worth, uh, whatever you say or do is a lie. You're this, you're that. In other words, they just want a good little girl to do and say what they want to do and say, or or they just whatever the cookie cutter that they want you to be. And if you're not, they will insult you and put you down. And there was a time when it kind of worked and I was believing what they were saying. And sorry if I'm getting discombobulated because now it's like... <laughs> I, I, wanted to do, I wanted to do this video for a while, but I just... I can never come up with the right words. But Maxine Waters did this, um, I'm going to insert there, and it was, it's kind of like that. It's just, they want to just shut you up. And in fact, like, let me, I'll show you the screenshots later. But there's a group of people that's going to, of course, believe my husband or believe, or believe whatever they want to believe, who know better. But... And they know me for so many years, so I, I don't get it. But but now I do get it because I, I do speak my mind and I do tell the truth, whether they like it or not. And yes, I get upset when I'm treating, when I'm being treated unfairly. I will speak up. And when someone's being rude, I'm going to call you out on it. It's not because I'm a center of attention. I mean, because I do reflect on that. I, I think back, do I, am I a center of attention? And, I, and I, I'm, I think back like, no. I mean, yes, I'm on Twitter. I'm a fetish model. So I need to promote myself. It's part, even though the income is not that much, it's still something. And, and so they do it too. Like they're on Twitter. They're on uh, social media promoting their stuff. And their life and showing what they're doing. Everyone has social media. So it's like, ah, that's not a center of attention. And it's like, what they're saying does not make sense. They're just saying it because it makes them feel better. It makes them feel validated. It makes me, it's like by putting me down, it makes elevate them. And like, they think they're so great. And they're not. They complain about things. They get mad. They rant and rave. And um, I have proof of that. And um, they do all the things that they accuse me of. It's basically projection. And they're being narcissists. They just are. And so I went through my little phase of, um, you know, anger. And block and because it does make me feel good I will block anyone who's toxic like this person that I just blocked that said was making fun of fetish con and he's done it for years and so I finally just had enough it was just hurtful like I don't go on their page and say hurtful things there's a reason why everyone got blocked because they go out of their way to hurt me 
They go out of their way to hurt me. I never went out of my way to hurt them. Have they hurt me and I said something back? To be hurtful? Yes. Yes. But, <laughs> like the whole cliche, I didn't start the fire. They're marriage meddlers and they're still stirring the pot. They're still stirring the pot. So, I will show you the screen grabs and, um, and stuff. And like, let me see. I did like, as you hear the shower above me. Like, I dare anyone to catch me a lie, a premise of an honesty. Cling to drama. You don't care about truth. You just want women to be under your control. Another thing I wrote, if I'm so histonic, I, I am so histonic that I stayed nine years in an abusive relationship and got a job in a laundromat. These drama boys are projecting and narcissists. When silly boys insult you and you get upset at the passive-aggressive abuse, they call you histonic. Projection most likely. And yes, I'm being irrelevant. And just, uh, anyway, I'm just... But anyway, I guess that's my little rant, even though I'm saying calmly because um, I reflected on it. Because they just want to get a rise out of me, and they did for a little bit. But they're going after me. I'm not going after them. And, and if this divorce thing, what's going on, whatever, they're getting the side from the other, from him, from my husband, they're getting from him. They're only getting the side that he's telling them. They don't hear my side. I mean, the only way they'll hear my side is seeing these videos, I guess. But right now, there's things going on, you know, as you know, discovery, discovery, another discovery, this and that. And I got to get documents to prove that I'm telling the truth. I have nothing to hide. I always say this, I have nothing to hide. It just costs money to prove it. And so be it. That's just what I got to do is what I got to do. I got to pay a lawyer to prove it. That I can't produce something that doesn't exist. What's there is there. And there it is. So life is pretty good. I still get my mood swings. I still like, you know, but to be honest, it's been pretty good. It's like, it's like normalcy. If I get in a bad mood or if I say something, the people around me are like, it's okay. They do the same thing and everyone is okay with it. It's like, it's just normal human behavior. They're not making me look like, oh, you're crazy. When they're doing something more crazy, and then I, I get upset and I say something. Oh my God, how dare you? How dare you not a good little girl and just do and, and whatever we envision you to be, you need to fit that. If you don't fit that, oh my God. So I'm learning that everything's fine and it's like I'm calm my group of friends have grown if you see my update my group of friends have grown I see the time ticking this is a long video so I'm gonna stop it but you get the gist of it right yeah these little drama boys drama and you know they're all the guys they're all guys they're all guys sure there's I'm sure there's some girls out there that are friends with them that believe this too, but they're not as adamant. They're not as uh, out what, um, out there. These drama boys, they're hilarious. They're funny. And they always like to put on social media, how, oh, how beautiful this guy is. And, oh, I'm taking a bike ride and doing this, all these lovely things. But yet, I see the darkness behind those words. See, words are nothing. Actions are everything. 
Anyway, I don't know where this video went. It went all over the place. It's just something that I wanted to get off my chest and 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 I'll let you know that I'm still doing good. And yes, I still have my bouts of like craziness and that's the newest craziness going on. So this video is a long video and I apologize. To all my states, cadets, I'm River Cats. Have a groovy day. Peace. Auntie Maxine. For your dedication to truth and justice, for the way you keep it real all the time. For your gospel hit, I'm reclaiming my time. Please accept the Black Girls Rock Social Humanitarian Award. You, you rock! rock. Everyone. To Beverly Bond, the founder of Black Girls Rock, and Deborah Lee, the chairman and CEO of BET, I'm extremely grateful for the recognition that I'm receiving this evening. But I want you to know, if it was not for the love and respect shown to me by black women, those right-wing, ultra-conservative, alt-right haters in this country, they would have me believe I'm too black, I'm too confrontational, I'm too tough, and I'm too disrespectful of them. But now I know I'm simply a strong black woman. others have told us we can't do. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how high you think you are. If you come for me, I'm coming for you.